What's up, Luca Nation? It is the last episode of our 10 for 10 Women in the Hobby series. And some might say we saved the best for last. I don't know. We don't know how this episode is going to go. It might be the worst of the 10. You never really know. But Absolute train wreck. It's going to be a train wreck. It, it's a tra- I mean, it may very well be. We actually tried this once, and the internet was very spotty. So here we are, our second attempt at bringing you none other than Alex Jimo. I don't know how to introduce you. The heartbeat of Mint Collective... No, do I definitely. introduce you as? I mean, how do you introduce yourself when you when you approach them and say, "Hey, I'm Alex Jimo." What the? Just What's the face of the hobby. What's up, guys? I'm Alex Jimo. Um, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a no. good one. That's a good one. No, you, no. I'm curious who's gonna figure it out first. You or Andrew? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> when I was a kid, so we immigrated how, here from the UK. How old are you, Andrew? Twenty-one. Oh, I think I look. Oh God, um, <laughs> thirty-two. So when we moved, wait, here, we're the same uh, exact age. There you go. We're gonna we're gonna grab a drink at the at national. Okay, um, Alex, if you have headphones, I think I'm there's not an echo. But while you while you put on headphones or whatever, do you? You thing. want me to put headphones on? <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, if you can, because there's yes. an echo. Oh, How this thing oh, works? Yeah, it bounces on. off the wall and then hits hits back. Cage, when we yes, first tell me moved a story to America. There was this like big house near uh, BJ's. We would drive by it all the time. My grandma would have her Pontiac. Mm-hmm. And I would say, I'm going to be a businessman and I'm going to buy you that house. Wow. I think I wanted to be from when I was a little kid. I swear to God is I always wanted to buy and sell things. And I always wanted to be a businessman because we came to America. It was like the promise of the American dream. If you work hard enough, get a little bit of lucky, meet Cage or an awesome co-host. Because you, you could do stuff. So I'm curious, AG, the real oh. AG. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few ags in the hobby actually i muted. think it's you're yeah, muted, I'll, mute you. I'll mute you alex don't worry don't worry <laughs> oh wait hold there on you. you're good you're okay, right. you what did you want to be yes. when you grew up? what did I you want to be it. i wanted to be the sideline reporter for nez and i wanted to be a you know the baseball girl um but unfortunately i, I don't think i was their cup of tea <laughs> but i wanted I mean, to be I want to be what I'm doing now, but like, did I think it was going to make money talking about sports cards and collectibles for a living? Absolutely not. Um, oh, but back the truth, Charlie, up a little bit. One, Andrew, yeah. you when you came over here, was it under false pretenses? Like, did somebody sing to you that there were no cats in America, and that's why you decided to come? There were no cats in America. There's like, a, you come there over was with a five refugee. Pro- there was a refugee program for Jewish people because back in the Soviet Union, that was like against the culture. So well, there's a refugee program. They, they were giving people green cards. There are people out there who will get my movie reference. Um, you know, <laughs> five Mouskowitz. But more importantly, Alex. You know, yeah, some people. That? Some people say, "I want to be a pilot when I grow up." You, it's not okay to just be a pilot. You want to be a pilot and fly for JetBlue, right? Yeah. And you happen to be able to fly for Delta, but it's not good enough. You wanted to be the sideline reporter for the Red Sox. I did. But, but I you really were did. for the Mets and you were <laughs> for the Jets. Like, doesn't that count? I mean, it's like, isn't it like close for enough? Sure. For sure. I will say my toughest critic in, in life is myself, which is a detriment. And if I'm giving advice to any young woman or man out there that wants to do anything um, in media or entertainment, it's like, cut yourself a break. Um, it's not an easy business. Um, it's a freaking grind. And, you know, just take it in stride. So, yeah, like I'm successful, but just define success. Some people define success as being rich. 100% not rich. You guys know that, right? Um, <laughs> you know, but I can go to bed at night saying like, you know what, girl? Like you did good so far. Like, you know, I- I've done things that most men can only dream of. And the more and more I do, the more haters I'm getting on social media. And that means I'm making it. So I like it. <laughs> I mean, that's a good measure of success, right? Cage. Right. I got my yes. first death threat the other day, you guys. Seriously? Do you? Oh, come oh, on. Seriously. Buy I the mile. What, what's the quote? Buy, buy an inch, life's a cinch. Buy a mile. Buy the is yard, it? life is hard. But buy the inch, life's a cinch. That's what I tell Andrew all the time. And the second thing we always remind each other of is what is real success? Isn't it just having fun? It's happiness, I think, right? You know? I'm I'm good in terms of career couldn't be you know going any better. But again, I'm 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 single. I'm am home. 
you know, I'm in, I'm in no man's land, but I'm I'm choosing that course. Like I I'm choosing Alex Chimo over, you know, my potential partner. Like I want to um be happy with myself and who I am first before I settle down with anyone, before I, you know, make a move by, you know, buy a piece of property. You know, it, it you know, happiness comes from within. So I'm still in search of that. Um, but you know, the hobby, I will say you guys, has has helped tremendously. Just you know, guys like you having conversations like this right now, like you guys are my friends. Um, I've made my best friends in life in this space within the last nine months. I've only been doing hobby content for nine months and it's incredible. Wow. There's a lot of incredible people in this space. There's all feels also like you've been here longer. A lot of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> feels like you've been here longer than nine months. It definitely I, does. It's because I, I, I haunt you. I haunt people in their dreams. I'm all <laughs> over the place. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, I mean, listen, part, part and parcel of this, you know, 10 for 10 women in the hobby, you know, and we've had on some, some, some really great guests and I will, I will, I will say we've yeah. gotten some, some great feedback for these episodes. This was Andrew's idea. I mean, we had a lot of conversations after I get back from me. I've listened to every episode, by the way, all well, thank you, you for that. Are freaking killing it. I've listened to every episode on the treadmill. All these women are incredible and you guys are awesome for, um, you know, giving them a spotlight. Um, so, so we appreciate that. Them. Look, more people should do it. And it, you know, we have something in common that I didn't know about. I also listen to our episodes while I'm on the treadmill. Um, <laughs> you don't go on the treadmill. Come on. Oh, no, it's very true. I, 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 it would, it would be a first, the first time I get on there hundred <laughs> percent, but, but more importantly, you know, when we came back from Mint collective, I said, you know, there are a lot of people we should be talking to. And you were, you know, that, that's it. We got to make sure we got to talk to Alex and talk about Mint Collective, what she did there, what she was able to do. And then, you know, maybe talk to you about your hopes for what you can, I don't want to say parlay that into, but, you know, we, we talk betting. So parlay is a good word. You know, tell yeah. us about your experience there. And then, you know, if you were able to write your own ticket after that, based on what you learned there, what you're able to do there, what would you do next? Like based off the men or like yeah, general, talk to, talk to us about men. Talk to us about men. Too. I thought men was awesome. It was incredible. Unfortunately, like I don't think I got to enjoy it as much as I would have liked because I was obviously working. <laughs> but um, you know, I met so many people. I literally couldn't walk. I, I would say this. I said this to my mom and dad. That is the first and only place I will ever be a, like a celebrity in. I swear to you, I walked ten feet and every I would get stopped every ten feet by. Um, a father or with their daughter or, you know, just a random guy. And, and people were thanking me for doing what I've been doing. Like, thank you for bring, um, being an asset to the hobby. Thank you for, you know, having a voice. And, and then I had women come up to me and say, thank you for being like a real bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, like, thank you. So like, it was incredible. Like, like awesome. Um, well, I mean, it's awesome. important to have that. I noticed more husband and wife teams more fathers mothers with their daughters there and yeah. i definitely saw some of your your content you take a, a little bit of extra time out to you know pose take a picture with you know girl with the bengals jersey or oh, you know sure. whatever it may be right um yeah. which is good i mean we kind of need that because that you know that is the, that's the next generation right um you know next part you were a sideline reporter in the nfl you know give me in your opinion the biggest name that you got Would to talk you consider to the Jets and NFL team. Not really. That's where I'm going with this, by the way. So I know <laughs> since it was the Jets that it's not going to be that big of a name. But you had the other microphone. Who did you get to talk to? That was like, all right, you know, on the sidelines. Who like so, biggest name? So when I worked for the Bart Jets, Scott? I, I was. Yeah, I worked for. <laughs> I've worked with Bart many times recently as well. Um, I I've met so many people. When I was with the Jets, they were sort of a. Tra they're always a train wreck, but <laughs> that team was star studded. Like we're talking, this was Ryan Fitzpatrick's, um, the year he held out. I don't know if you guys remember, he held out for like a max contract, right? Like Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, nice guy. He went to Harvard, right? But like, mm -hmm. they didn't even make the playoffs the year before. He's now holding, you know, out the organization when I get there. Great beard. Money. Great, Great beard. Of, like amazing beard, right? <laughs> um, but like. It started off with the Fitzpatrick drama. Then you had Brandon Marshall. Like he literally, uh -huh. I think that was the last year he ever played a football game. I was with yep. him. Um, he was, you know, he was dealing with a lot of, you know, issues. <laughs> yeah, his own had, personal stuff. Exactly. You had Darrell Revis, who also has his own stuff. You had Leonard Williams. You had. Uh, so you got a great bunch of names that you got to talk to. Darrell Revis is a great, oh, great player. Yeah. But think about this for a second. You Eric actually, Decker. Eric Decker. Eric Decker. I mean, Andrew's a fan of his wife, 100%. Yeah. But I interviewed 
Zac Efron and Hugh Jackman at the same time. Brooklyn Decker Night is, in his, is in her way. It was right. awesome. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> no, no, no. Just go with it. I but, love that movie, but, though. But Jesse James Decker is. I have the photo right here. I'll never forget. Hugh Jackman and a. And Zach Efron. Okay, but 24 years NFL, old. you were in the NFL silence. She, I, you know what? I love it. Just that's it. Just push the go button and go. This is what you must feel like, Andrew. Every episode where it's like Cage is going. So, well, I'm curious if she ever had a, a, like an interview derail or any crazy interviews that come to mind. Like, you, are you kidding you me? Probably, Have you met me? me? <laughs> One sec. So she's talking about Bart Scott. We got Darrell Revis. We got some, you know, some, you know, some other name. Ryan Fitzpatrick. You go to Mint, right? You're not Eric Decker. You're not. You're not working for an NFL team. You're in the mm-hmm. hobby. You're 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 working for collectible, and you're yeah. you're doing sports cards, and you're talking to Peyton Manning. Oh, so cool. You know what I mean? I, like, think about that, that for a second. I know that was honestly one of the best best five minutes of my entire career because when I spoke to Peyton Manning, everyone keeps asking, "What did you talk to him about?" Nothing to do with football. Absolutely nothing. And that was so refreshing. I think what Peyton Manning is doing with Omaha Productions um, and his little brother, Eli, you know, the guy that won two Super Bowls for the Giants, um, what they're doing is so incredible. That's kind of what I want to do with my career. That's why I got into this space, the hobby space. That's why I left traditional media. I'm not a robot. I'm not boring. I'm, I'm tired of, you know, you know, getting um, things to say and being told what to say. Like, I want to say and do what I want, <laughs> you know, you know, with boundaries. But we, and guys, she's to- uh, keeping it secret. She's keeping it secret, but I'm, she, I got it out of her because, you, you know, we're, 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 we're pals. Um, we're I know it. what she spoke to Peyton Manning about. They, they, they talked about his favorite recipe for chicken parm. <laughs> it tastes so good. Chicken I have parm. a feeling Peyton doesn't <laughs> eat chicken parm. <laughs> I don't oh, know, yeah. man. I mean, for well, people who yeah. don't know, and like me, what what is Omaha Productions? What, what's that supposed to be about? You you really don't know. Okay, so I mean, Mm-mm. have you seen what Peyton's doing? Uh, he was playing during... football. Next question. <laughs> so they do He's doing a, these uh, broadcasts for the NFL. The alternate the broadcast. With his brother, and they're expanding it from the NFL. Oh, Remember, I they did it with you. the. They did it with. Me. Can you hear me or no? Can you hear me, Andrew? You sound amazing. Okay. Um, of course, the king. Classic. Okay, hopefully you, everybody can I got you back. Out. I'm sorry. Okay, you guys. Right, okay. I don't know as long as you can hear me. Otherwise, you know, if you can't hear me, the audience probably can't hear me. But <laughs> they, they did the alternate broadcast for ESPN. Remember him and his brother and they bring on guests? And it was incredible. They're it's expanding incredible. that to other sports as well now. They're going to be doing that for other sports, and they're going to be expanding a production company now. Oh, yes, they are. And I hope to be involved with it soon. I think I will. But, like, what he's doing is he's changing the game. Traditional media is dead. It's like a dinosaur, right? Like what Peyton and Eli are doing is is what I want to do. And I what I started doing with MLB. I, I hosted with the Twitch, Twitch right? parties, right? So I hosted the MLB All-Star game. I hosted the Home Run Derby. I hosted um, Field of Dreams game, right? Stuff like that. Because people are sick of being bored. People want entertainment. People want people that like – people want to listen to people that – you can like just have a beer with, right? Like a lot of these people that I've worked with over the course of my career, um, they take themselves way too seriously. Like this is sports and ultimately sports is entertainment. And the same is about sports cars. Like a lot of people make money in the industry. Um, It is a hobby ultimately, but it's also fun. We are here because we're passionate about it. It's nostalgia. It's everything. So what Peyton's doing with Omaha is sort of like kind of what I want to branch off into. And that's why I, I am here talking to you right now. My wheels are kind of spinning because I never thought of it as like an emerging industry. But now that I now that you kind of bring it up, it's people want to sort of they feel like they're hanging out with him, the Mannings. Right. Oh, that's It feels that's like they're on the couch want. with them. They're just chilling exactly. at home and they like the, what they're bantering about and joking about as much, if not more than the game. Right. It's, I mean, and who knows more about football than the, the big brain? He's the biggest head in the NFL, right? I, I hey, know. be nice if you want to work for Omaha. I don't make fun <laughs> yeah. of it. No, I mean, the man, <laughs> the man was nothing, but it, I was so impressed by him. He was literally incredible. Um, but not only is he literally an expert in his field, the man is freaking funny. He's hilarious. Yeah. Eli's um, really funny too, which is you wouldn't yeah. think if you kind of, I guess they, they work off of each other really well because Cooper's my not, favorite. He's my favorite. Yeah, Me and Caesar. Cooper. He's he's funny. He's my favorite. Guy Did you know there's a fourth Manning brother? I Archie. didn't know that. No, that's the dad. No. 
yeah. No, Arch, and then Arch is the grand. Oh, what okay. Was, what was Arch. Peyton doing at mint? What was his angle? Was he a collector at heart? Is no, he, so, he realize oh what was he doing? He was complaining about Tom Brady unretiring. That's what he was doing. Did you hear that? That was <laughs> yes. incredible, right? The <laughs> mint collective made ESPN. That was awesome. Yep. Um, what was he doing? Thanks to great journalism. Yeah, exactly. It was Darren Ravel, you know, my good, my friend Darren. I'm actually jealous. I was like, why didn't I tweet that out? I got to learn from Darren. I got to get smart like him. Um, he broke the news. He's coming uh, off an injury as well, and he's still playing at top tier form. Who? Darren. He, oh, we wish we, we, we send you love. <laughs> the back but he was, you yeah, know, I bought a ticket stub for his back surgery. They were selling what, what in the gallery. Like, I got a ticket honestly, stub. I'm going to get him to autograph it and get it sent to PSA. I'm a okay. ticket fan. I know you guys are, aren't fans of that. Okay, like, remember we, we started our show. It was August 2020, and in October 2020, I pitched the Kobe final game ticket. Yes, you did. In yep. October 2020. I happen to like tickets. You don't I, like, If you don't like tickets, then don't buy it. But there no, is value in It's tickets. not that we don't like them. It's just when a Kobe game used ticket was like 100 bucks. <laughs> it was like, cool, this is like collectible. When it's like 10,000 bucks, you're like, Crazy. Really? What the hell happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that we don't like tickets. They're awesome. Yeah. They're just uncapped supply. Yeah. No, it's I, it's crazy. I mean, I have pretty much every ticket stub I've ever, every game or concert I've ever been to. I have them all saved. Unfortunately, I did go to David Wells' per perfect game for the Yankees when I was little. But so like, who cares about David you Wells? The, you have the Valentino beanie somewhere from that. Yeah, I, 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 I do I'm actually, Cage. You'll hear more about that soon. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Like the, whole, I'm, I'm really not. I'm really not. <laughs> but the whole guy who pitched a perfect game on LSD, I call bullshit. Wait, but, which guy was that? What are you talking about? You never Who heard the story? Perfect? No. Who puts perfect game on LSD? I mean, you do perfect <laughs> episodes on whatever it is you're on, so it can be done. You'd be surprised. I, I joined your Marvel break after I did. <laughs> oh, dude, I thought they were the best cards in the world. Like, he was like, Marvel's so awesome. These things are great. I got to be myself. He's like, can I touch them? I'm like, you're on the other end of the phone. <laughs> you can't touch the cards. I'm here. You're there. <laughs> Listen, Doc I Ellis. Doc Ellis in 1970, really? he he pitched a perfect game and then he later said he was under the influence of LSD. Maybe it was like MS. I totally believe it because sometimes, <laughs> some, sometimes I'm better at my job if I have a glass of wine before it like calms my nerves. Is it LSD? Or dab. No, but you never know to eat your own or his own. Uh, in that, in and this is the world today to each their own. If you like tickets. It. Tickets, go for tickets. If you like shoes, go for shoes. You like movie tickets, go for movie tickets. I happen to own every movie ticket stub for every movie my wife and I ever went to from when we Stop. started dating to now. Are you serious? Wait, that's I saved so every romantic. One of them. I saved every one of them. So cute. Now, I don't know whether or not any of them were the uh, you know first performance of some <laughs> big movie that I should grade with PSA, but I still have all the movie tickets. You know, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Alex. So I, so yeah, go ahead. You, we kind of grew up during this era, KG as well. Remember when betting was taboo and now betting is like the coolest thing ever, right? And I used to have to like bet on these like printed out sheets from Bodog, which turned into <laughs> Bovada. I don't bet anymore. I'm in remission. Cage is helping me. Uh, I'm in recovery. <laughs> That's it. But a couple weeks, I'm going to get him his 20 day, uh, his 20 day it's token. True. Cause it, it, it spirals out of control. But like, are you worried about? You know, sports betting, sports card speculation, no. you know, ripping, by, by, just let people choose and let them figure it out on their own type of thing. Listen, I'm going to tell you straight up. My grandfather was a compulsive, compulsive gambler, diehard bets fan, like learned a lot from the guy, but like he kind of, you know, effed up a lot of his family stuff. Right. So my grandmother is literally an Al-Anon speaker. Like that's how anti-gambling my mom and my grandmother and my family are. So when I started literally talking about gambling and sports betting for a living on my Instagram, my, my family's freaking out. And like, mm -hmm. I kind of got it because this is the first year that I've really bet, comp I say competitively because I was betting against myself. I'm now a FanDuel VIP client. Um, <laughs> That doesn't mean I've made a lot of money, right? Like it's addicting. You know. I have an addictive personality. We all do. A lot of us do. It was an addicting thing, but you have to learn how to navigate it. You have to rein it in. I had to step aside from it for a couple, for a couple of months. I was like, I can't do this anymore. You know, but 
I'm an adult. I, I learned how to step aside. A lot of people are, are not going to be able to do that. So yeah, it is like difficult. I would say, Andrew, in a couple years, we are going to be able to go to City Field, Yankee Stadium, and there's going to be an iPad in front of us with FanDuel or DraftKings or whatever it is, and you're going to be able to bet on the next pitch. You're going to be yeah. able to bet. In-game, yep, in-game. Exactly. Like, that's where and it's going. watch it and freak out. Yeah. That, yeah, and that's where it's going. People are going to blow their savings. People are going to – but, you like, that's just the way So it let's is. figure out a way for you to profit on it, right? You and the other <laughs> three or 4,000 people who are going to listen to this in the next 24 hours because I have the idea. Next time What's you talk to Peyton, here is Omaha Productions' next big thing. They do a in-game alternate broadcast, the Manning Brothers, on the couch, Sunday night baseball with ESPN, live betting – with Pete Rose sitting in between them. Yes! Bring Pete Rose back. Free him. You can't bet on your own games. What, what, what game? He, he bet he, to only win. Right? Who, who cares? cares? You just talked about a dude who was on LSD and pitched the perfect game. I mean, we overlooked steroids. I didn't steroids. condone it. I just asked if you guys knew about uh, it. I mean, come on now. You know. He bet for the Reds to win. Literally. Literally. Listen, baseball, baseball has, has looked the other way on a lot of other stuff, and now their biggest moneymaker or one of their biggest moneymakers in the very near future is going to be sports betting, in-game betting. Part of what they're going to do to tweak the games, to move them along, is to make them more betting-friendly because baseball is a difficult sport to bet until you get into the in-game it's betting. It's so difficult. It's um, so hard. There are some professional bettors who you know bet legit money on football, on basketball, and it would be enough – just for the casinos, just for the the, the 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 places to pull in those guys to bet on baseball, they'd make enough money. They can't, but it's gonna happen. Pete Rose, there's my idea. Put Pete Rose Alex. on the couch with the Mannings. I, so you, I love it. I love you it. said you wanted to be a, a sideline reporter as long as you can remember. Like, did you play sports growing up? Like, was no, were I'm you probably <laughs> the best athlete in the hobby? <laughs> That's what I think. So, like, you know, usually. <laughs> Nah. Uh, by the way, we're doing a three-on-three tournament at some and show. In the, clearly, okay, the, most say, the one sport I'm not the one sport I'm not good at is basketball. I will say I'm not. I'm too short. Soccer, soccer, soccer. <laughs> three-on-three soccer. No, I played soccer as well. Yeah, I, I heard you're a good soccer player. I'm not the worst. I've been. I'm better. Yeah. I heard, yeah. The whole audience heard he was a good basketball player until that turned out to not be the case too. So we have. Um, it yet remains to be seen. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Sometimes I mean, being humbled is the best thing that could happen to you, Cage. But this is true. You, this is true. Before this you wanted true. to be a sideline, I'm waiting player, for it. Did you like? How did you know that was what you wanted to be? Like not being a professional athlete, or I'll tell you the the real story, right? So I played baseball with boys, ice hockey with boys, my entire life. Not only did I play with whatever, I'm gonna humble brag right here. I was always like it. top three on the team, like like really good. I was an athlete, but then I stopped growing because. At the end of the day, you know, girls are smaller. We have, you know, smaller bone structure. We just don't grow. So not that woman. Stop- she, she's killing it. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. Uh, moving back, Andrew. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> Trying to get me canceled, bro. You guys both um, agree with me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> who would cancel us for that? If they cancel us for that, Every- we don't want them as a fan. Anyway. I mean, listen, I got to switch the attention. So you were you were 11 years old, five foot one, and just stopped growing. I'm only five foot two now. So yeah. So uh, a Little League baseball um, team. I was on the all-star team. I made the last out. I was a second baseman. I was a, I always batted lead off because I was always the fastest and I was a line drive hitter, right? I couldn't hit a home run because I didn't have enough strength for that, whatever. Um, but I made the last out of the game and I knew that that was it because after that game, I would have to stop playing, you know, essentially with the boys, right? I had to play softball and softball is a different game. I hate it. Um, but I started <laughs> hysterically crying one because I lost, I was like, why didn't I get a hit? You suck, Alex, like whatever. Um, and my mom said, I, why are you so sad? Why are you so sad? Like you had a great year. Like, it's okay. And I said, well, this is the last time I'm going to be on the field with the guys. Like, like I'm never going to be able to do this again. She's like, no, you're going to be on the field with a microphone. Like you'll be there one day. And from that point, I just took off from that. And, and that's, you know, <clears throat> a couple of years later, I decided I want to be a sports reporter, and I went to Syracuse University, and here I am. <laughs> you go. Yeah. So the orange. I, I owe my mom a lot. Listen, everybody, hit the pause button and search out in Google. What's in the red cup, real quick? What's in the what's mine? in my cup? The solo oh, cup. Oh no, it's a high noon. High noon. There you Do go. Do you know what so, that is? Do they drink those in Mexico? Yeah, but they put tequila in them. 
That's called a loaded hide. <laughs> <laughs> they put tequila in them. <laughs> but so, guys, take a pause and Google. I'm pretty sure this will come up if you do this. Google sideline reporter uh, in gruesome injury learns all about rugby. <laughs> You saw that, huh? So, oh, I mean, on. obviously, you're dedicated to the craft, right? Andrew, if you haven't seen this, take a look. She was, I guess, you know, what, did they throw the ball? Like, they, you know, kick the ball? I don't remember what it was. But she goes <clears> to try to catch a rugby ball. And literally, so I can do this, Alex. You're going to hate this. It's going to give you, like, PTSD. No, 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 no. I have from, you know, from, from, from an old football injury here. Andrew's got old injuries, too. But I can dislocate my thumb just – like that here, so you can kind of like disgusting. Oh, do that kind of deal. Right oh there. my so, god! But your thumb was gross. <laughs> mine was even. <laughs> mine was that on crack, literally, like no. literally. So yeah, I don't know if you guys realize disgusting. the rugby ball. By the way, these are professional. Yeah. I so I cover MSG Network rugby games for you know the MLR, and <laughs> those, <laughs> for I did a lot of content. Um, my boss was like, it'd be fun, funny to put you on camera, like playing with the guys. I'm like, sure, whatever. Like this is fun. <laughs> so I'm like, let's do it. Right. You guys know I'm super competitive. So they start kicking me the, the high, ball. it's called a high ball catch cage. And Andrew, when, when, when I say high ball, it goes up like a thousand yards in the air. So high. <laughs> of course, you think a rugby ball is not a football. It is t twice the size and four times heavier. And it is like, it's like hard it's thick and i just hit like i lost whatever i lost the ball in the sun okay i lost in the sun <laughs> it's a cloudy hit, day by the way watch the video <laughs> and the, and the surgeon said this it was the perfect like this is like the perfect game for your thumb it hit me in the perfect spot and my thumb andrew literally snapped off and it was down here by my it, it's it bad was, you think I it was so it, bad so i so it hurt so bad, but, but at first I knew, mind you, I'm on camera. I'm mic'd up, right? I have these like handsome as hell European Fijian men. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't even me. flinch, by the way. Like, no, oh no, I was internally dying. And I was like, ow, that hurts. Like it just felt, I was like, oh, whatever. Like I stubbed my thumb like a toe, right? Yeah. Then I walk five more feet, Andrew. Like, and then all of a like sudden here. I look down, my thumb is like 10 feet, like below where it should be. <laughs> Thankful, thankfully, there was you know professional athletic trainer there. He snapped it back in place. We caught the whole thing on film. It was awesome. But the first thing I thought of was like, did you get that on camera? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> And I still, can't, I still can't, like, I have no function in my thumb. I, it sucks. But it, it made for great content. So That's it. The life of a content creator. That's all it's, it's like, all it's, wor it's, it's all worth the, it in the it's end. It's worth it for the views? Yep. I, no, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely not. No, 100%. No, but yeah. I mean, listen, dedicated to a craft. So you were everywhere at Mint. You were hosting, you were, you know, doing panels, you were all over the place. I think Mint 2.0, you should be somebody who's up there actually speaking on a panel. And if you I could do so. that, would you, is there a topic you'd like to speak about? Is it, you know, bringing the world of sports into the world of yeah. sports cards, something yeah. like that? Yeah. By the way, thank you for saying that. But uh, yeah, I, I think I would, you know, sort of speak to what I was talking about with, with Peyton in Omaha. Like, Combining my passions of traditional sports media broadcasting with the hobby, I think there is so much potential. We haven't even tapped the surface of it yet. Um, I think that it's going to hit mainstream, the hobby, very, very soon in more ways than one, ways that I'm involved in and other ways that I'm not involved in. And it's and the sky is the limit. And I think that at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Um, and we we need to change the landscape of entertainment as we know it. Um, Andrew, I think you could be good on it too. Maybe a, a second panel for Alex, something like, you know, hobby content on steroids or like what's the next iteration of hobby content. You yeah. know, we, we've got some podcasts and that kind of stuff. But, you know, obviously we know there are documentaries being filmed all over the place. You know, Ken Golden's got his show, which Alex may or may not know something about. You know, we got all kinds of craziness. You got <laughs> Omaha coming into it and, and the whole deal, right? Right. So, you know, maybe it's it's well, what are we what are we doing with this next? And maybe it's right. to attract different type of investors or to attract the general public. That's not just, you know, at card shows. That would be a kind of a cool thing. Like what what's the next what's hobby content 2.0? You We're know, just what... scratching the surface, Cage. Like, literally. I, I, uh, Andrew, I don't know if you know, Omaha Productions and Peyton Manning is involved with Ken's show on Netflix. So that's that's one way. Like, this, this, this shit is about to go, like, 
like blow up mainstream. Like it, it really is. Um, there's just so much potential there. It really is. It's it's just been so no offense, kind of boring, right? Like in terms of content and entertaining wise, but not just me, everyone, like every woman and man that I'm friends with now in the hobby, he's stepping up their game. Like I keep coming across these accounts and everyone's killing it. Everyone is killing it. But I'm telling you, not I me. I posted, I You're posted about it. cage free eggs. Did, did you see my post, Andrew? I this saw is a, this is a stupid dad joke post. There's so many we meaning to connect with. We never got a chance to, but I, I've seen seen it around quite a bit. One of one documentary. Can you? Yeah. Can you show some? He's like one on of that? my best friends, George Quinn. He is so freaking talented and creative. He's making a documentary. He has, by the way, he just purchased. This is I don't whatever. I don't care. He's not going to get married. He, he has um, the most insane Anthony Volpe collection you've ever seen. He has the um, BGS 9.5 Volpe uh, red. Um, and then he just bought, he just won the one on golden auction last night, the PSA 10. So he is, this is a baseball prospect. I know you're going to hate me for this, right? Yeah. Yes, he is the shortstop no, of the he's Yankees. Good. And he, that was he's a six from figure Jersey. Card, right? That the red was, six, was it went, I think it sold for like 150. For for a guy who has literally never played, Andrew. I don't understand the process. I mean, what, what about Wander Franco? Franco's cards were were there, but what, what was funny about Half Wander? A million dollars. But what was funny about Wander was, I mean, he was about as can't miss as can't miss gets. You know what I mean? Like people just knew he was the thing. He was always the top prospect. Volpe wasn't even the top prospect in the Yankees organization. Um, I know he was. Bad. Yeah, he passed Dominguez. But I know he was highly sought after. I know um, the Yankees were targeting him and Leiter's son. Um, and they were able to convince Volpe when they drafted him to forego college. I think he had a Vanderbilt. Uh, wow, going. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So they, they drafted him high enough and paid him enough money to bring him in. And, but they couldn't do that with Leiter. I think Leiter came out the, the next year. The Yankees didn't get him. I think he might, might have gone to Texas. But I've been collecting Volpe also, but just really? lower end stuff. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. nobody knew who he was because everybody was going for Dominguez on the Yankees side. But you now know what's yeah. me with prospects is I love prospects. Like, it's my the, favorite product. You hear the story a lot. Like he was coming up, and then they changed his mechanics, and he could never get it back. That's Davey, pitching that's and Davey Garcia. And like sometimes the best is like left untouched. You know. Yeah. And that that's, scares me with prospecting. Ted Williams said that too. Uh, it's uh, yeah, said one of the best piece of advice he got. I forget who the hell told him. He basically said they, somebody came, somebody in the rookie year told him like, um, "Don't let anybody tinker with your swing. Like your swing yeah. is a perfect swing. They're gonna try to tinker with it. They're gonna try to make you like hit differently for the different field. You know, true. You know, they're gonna try to just just do you. Don't let anybody mess with your swing. Obviously, I think we're glad that that nobody did because wow. you know a splinted splinter. But yeah, it's mechanics and and it's even worse now with analytics and all that other garbage and i think with davy garcia who we, we've talked about a couple of times they his they didn't want him to get hurt so they like switched his arm angle and now he basically can't get a, a hitter out so i'm hoping he comes back because i got a lot of his cards too <laughs> so. but, 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 but you but yeah but hold on andrew one second uh, but the reason why uh george quinn is going for putting a lot of money and riding on volpe is because of the hobby he's a yankee He's a Jersey boy. He's got the Italian thing. That's what sells. And, and that's something I've learned over the course of the last year is that people that you think are going to sell more aren't don't necessarily sell for what you think they are. Like the hobby likes different things, right? It's true. So Jersey boy, Italian, he's the shortstop. This guy, George Quinn, thinks Volpe is the second coming of Derek Jeter. Like, he, like maybe he is, maybe he's not. Also, the guy could go out tomorrow and tear his ACL. There's a lot of risk and gamble into cards. Yeah. It's a lot. It's about get. It's about gambling and betting. So I like it because I get to follow the games and make judgment calls based on talent. That's why I enjoy it. Am I buying cards worth a hundred grand? No, I'm buying like forty dollar cards. But like I, I, it's fun. And but For back now. to George, he's making that one of on one of one of one documentary. It's his journey, um, collecting throughout the hobby, and he's involving like. Every big name, like all the breakers, you know, all the people that are vendors and everything and the journey that goes into it. And hopefully it it will sell mainstream soon. He's had many offers. He's just deciding and putting finishing touches on it. But it's going to be dope. I'm excited. I'm a big part of it, too. I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, the content game is so interesting. It's changed completely, right? Like now anybody with a camera and an idea could create something, create a product and go to, you know. Hey, Netflix, do you want this? Hey, Hulu, do you want this? Hey, Amazon Prime, do you want this? 
And mm-hmm. it's it's an incredible world we're living in. It's like, yeah, what's stopping you from living your dreams now, right? There's no kind of middleman. There's nothing. Just if you want to take a chance, take a chance. Well, if her dream media. is still an ESN, <laughs> it's her accent. Nobody wants to hear the Jersey girl on it. Exactly. ESN. That's what's stopping her from living her dream presently. I wasn't okay. blonde enough. I was not blonde enough for Nesta. Huh. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I was going with the Boston. You know, you have a wicked the Irish Jersey cap accent. Boston. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. She sounds wicked Jersey. <laughs> But no, I mean, listen, it, it, it works out nicely. Um, I enjoyed Mint. I think that, you know, it was it was well done. I think, obviously, you played a huge role in, in that show. What, if you could write, I mean, obviously, you know, you have some stuff going on already, but if you could write the next chapter and use that as a springboard for something that you would do personally, and then I'm going to ask you the bigger question, which is, you know, women in the hobby in general, right? Yeah. You know, how they can use this as a springboard, mm-hmm. bin collective, some of the momentum that's there. Um, so two-parter, yourself and then just, you know, women in the hobby overall. Where Perfect world. You're able to write the script for it. Talk to me about that. Well, I'll start with myself. Like, my ultimate goal um, with working in the hobby from day one has been um, transcending traditional media and the hobby and bringing them together. Like, I want to be interviewing athletes and – um, celebrities and getting more eyeballs on the hobby and, and people outside of the hobby that, that like a lot of my friends think I'm a huge freaking nerd. And I'm, they all thought I was crazy for coming up with this idea. I'm going to talk about my dad. I want to talk about sports cards for a living. He's like, what do you, what, what? It's never been done before. Okay. So let's change the landscape of the game. I want to, um, just entertain. So I would love to like host my own show and have big time guests come on. Um, and not just talk about the hobby, talk about everything, crypto, NFTs, like it's all coming together. Together, like all of these collectibles. By the way, sports cards are great, but I am a huge game use memorabilia person. I want to talk about the stories behind the memorabilia, right? Like that's more, that's more my speed because that brings in more of the sport aspect, the athletic aspect. Um, you know, making it more about that. And I think, I think, I think we're gonna get there soon. I, th- there's a lot of national attention on it already. I was just watching MLB Network a couple hours ago. They had Gary Sheffield on, and, and he was holding up his own rookie card. Like it's right. coming. A lot of people don't understand yet that the MLB, NFL, NBA, they're in bed now with fanatics. They're in bed now with all these big companies. Like money is a big deal. Like yep. if sports cards succeed, so does the MLB. So does the NFL. So like I think that. Um, the sky is the limit. I think next year is going to be the biggest year we've ever seen. Sheffield doesn't get enough Hall of Fame love when the votes come up. I thought he was going to improve. It's steroid. It's the bit. steroids. Yeah, but I mean, he, he was only in the Mitchell report and one little other kind of thing. He's not that far <laughs> removed from what Ortiz was. Um, but so oh, come on. <laughs> the same report. The same report on it. But I mean, yeah, yeah he was true. also involved in the Balco stuff later on with with the uh, Balco. Yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. Bonds. So it, you know, he does have that extra little stain on his uh, on his resume. So yes. before you get into the overall women in the hobby, you bring up uh, sports memorabilia. What's your favorite? What's your favorite piece you own? And if I lost you, you got a call. Yeah. What's the favorite piece you what? own? And or is he back? He's back. What's the favorite piece I own? I'm back. I hope. Favorite, favorite piece you piece own, and I then own? also, um, if you could buy, if money was no object, and you could buy any piece of sports memorabilia, what would you buy Ooh. for your own personal collection? Okay, so I'm a huge Jim Brown fan because I went to Syracuse, and I think what he did um, in terms of like the entire NFL. I know we lost Cage Andrew, but is insane. I think he's the best running back of all time. Um, so I would love a Jim Brown, like signed game used Jersey. That'd be so freaking dope. Right. Um, in terms of a card, my grail would probably be like a 1933 Babe Ruth Gowdy card. Cause like Babe Ruth, in my opinion is larger than life. Like you can't compare him to anyone. I don't even like, I don't like not even Michael Jordan. Like when I, not even Jordan. No, because when I was little, I thought I heard the stories about Babe Ruth, like, you know, calling his home run and this and that. I thought he was a fictional character. I really thought he was fake. Like think about it. Right. Like it's Babe Ruth. He literally, this is a long time ago. I don't know. Different. Different stuff. I, Babe Ruth to me is – I'm not even a Yankees fan, but he's dope. But, but um, it's, it's safe to say baseball is your favorite sport. Like that's your childhood love. It's your oh, favorite Oh, yeah. Well, that's my, my nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else can I say? What if you were MLB commissioner? So base, baseball is a distant fourth to every other sport right now, right? Do you agree with that? 
A distant fourth? What are you talking about? Where, where, where would you rank football, basketball? I don't know. Is he putting hockey? What are you putting? UFC? You're you not putting the hockey? NHL ahead of MLB. No, no way. Soccer? Absolutely, absolutely not. Hockey is not ahead of MLB. No he says soccer. soccer. He says soccer. Uh, NHL and MLB not are not in hard. America, Andrew. Not even close. We don't care about soccer. Unfortunately, we just don't. But baseball loses loses fandom. I mean, I understand Andrew's point, right? I mean, soccer, if it's not there worldwide, you know, in America, it's growing. F1 is growing. The 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 game itself is just not easily digestible by today's fans. Slow. I would say more American fans watch soccer now than they do baseball. I don't know if there's any stats to back that up though. There's def I hundred percent would I would n- not bet on that if I was betting. <laughs> well, you are a better. You are a better. <laughs> um, and you're I a VIP, that- and Andrew's not. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. I see. You. By the way, that's not a good thing. In order to be a VIP, <laughs> that doesn't mean about. It has nothing to do with how much you won, just how much you spent. Right. That's how awesome you are. Um, no. <laughs> but baseball, I agree with you. MLB, there's a lot. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. Are, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Why does this keep happening? You guys, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Hold on, my computer. Look at that gone. Verizon commercial you could have. Meanwhile, Andrew, while we are here, I I will tell you. So before we started this, my son's playing video games with a friend, and he, you know he decided you know he was going to yell at his phone, and his friend was going to yell. It was going to be on speakerphone, so I don't know they're playing Minecraft, whatever it is. And I gave him AirPods, which you know I've used once or twice on this. So what was guy. what was happening there was his AirPods were actually connecting to the phone here. So that's I had to. Sh- I jumped off camera for a second to shut the Bluetooth off to make sure that didn't happen. Again. Yeah, sometimes so. technology is is the worst. It's the that's worst. What happens. But anyway, um, what I was saying about MLB, I I I see your point, Andrew. Like, there's a lot to be done. Like, but I will commend them in this respect. They are trying. They are trying <laughs> to speed the game up. Like last night, I was watching. I was watching. Actually, I was watching the Red Sox Yankee game with George Quinn because he's a big Yankees fan. I'm a diehard Red Sox fan, and I noticed um, the catchers now can give their signs from their pads. Did you know that? Yep. From their knee pads. That's crazy. I think in a couple of years, um, the umpires will become obsolete. I do like the fact that they put a, a, um, the base runner on second base in extra innings. Like, they're trying. It's a slow game. It's not for everybody. There'll it's be a pitch clock soon. I hope okay. so. I hope you're right. Um, it's definitely clock. not for everybody. But I think we can all agree that baseball is America's favorite pastime. And, like, when you think about your grandfathers or whatever, like, you think about baseball, right? So I think just, I, going to stadiums is my favorite thing. Like, But I, that's I, the thing, right? It's an in-person okay. thing, Andrew. You're 100% right. And it used to be, like, a day at the park. You know, these games are three hours long. It's like, okay, you know, we'll be able to take the family. We'll go. We'll have lunch. We'll eat some hot dogs, Cracker Jacks, and watch the game. And it's, a, it's an event. It's a day-long thing. That's not what sporting events are now. They're no. either quick, they're easily consumable, they're, you know, basketball in and out, you know, and, and people don't even want to watch the whole game. They want to watch, you know, the clips of it. They want to watch the highlights of it. And when you, when you, you know, you factor in, you know, baseball is not as easily accessible as it was. I mean, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. It used to be, you know, you get a bleacher seat, you know, it's easy to get the family in there, buy a hot dog. Now, hot dog, beer, tickets, family of four. We spent um, hundreds of dollars. It's well, I think money. it depends on where you live, right? Because we're from near the, you know, me and you, uh, Cage, are from the New York tri-state area. It's a fortune to do anything. I can't even afford to go to a Knicks game. Let's talk about the NBA. They only play in the second half. <laughs> so That's true. Fourth quarter. It, like in order to go to a Knicks game and not sit freaking a mile away, you got to spend five hundred bucks just to sit down. It's crazy. I will it say is- th- this hasn't started yet, but like the application of NFTs, like. For baseball, for example, it's it's got that like in game go to the game vibe to it. If they could airdrop people, let's say like, hey, we randomly selected fifty fans to get season tickets for next year, or hey, we randomly selected fifty fans to get a free ticket for next game, they could use digital collectibles and showing up to an event to incentivize people to come. And I think we haven't got there yet. Or hey, you know, we randomly selected fifty fans for a free autograph signing at the end of the game. So like little things like that, they could really incentivize people to go at the game, stay at the game, spend money at the games, bet at the games. I will doing. tell you this, you guys, like when I worked for the Mets for, a, you know, hosting for a year in 2019, you know, they have the bobblehead games. People would line up around the block in Queens, wait for hours. Cause they only gave out like the first thousand fans to attend, get the bobblehead. Right. People love this shit. People love, love collectibles. 
So I agree with you, Andrew. Like there, I think, I think um, the owners and the leagues are going to see this very shortly and, and take advantage of it. That's a really good idea. You should patent that idea, by the way. I think Cage and I will be an owner of a team one day. Sometimes you don't know how it's going to happen, but you know if you have hard work, a little bit of good luck and faith, oh, yeah. good things can happen. And the Durham Bulls. <laughs> I want the Durham Bulls. That's what I want. Love that movie. Such a good movie. Fine. If they make money uh, <laughs> and they win championships. Hold on. If you guys could buy one team, what team would it actually be? Wait, most of you, wait, right? wait. Andrew, do you know what movie the Durham Bulls played in? No. Bull, Bull Durham, Andrew. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look what you did to poor Alex. <laughs> Susan Sarandon. Come on, Andrew. You got to The Durham Bulls. You buy the Sixers. A hundred percent. You buy the Sixers. Really? You would buy the Sixers. Yeah. Okay, Cage. It's my city. I mean, listen. Obviously, everybody wants to own the Yankees, but if I'm being honest about it, I think I would own the Miami Heat. Because then you're in Miami and it's a basketball team and it's hot it's girls like, everywhere. It's got the other. I mean, I, I'm not going that far. I don't need that. <laughs> Happily married, 18 years. But it's Miami, you know. Like that's a cool yeah. destination. It's a cool. That was where crypto's headed. Is where the money's headed. I went beyond the team itself, Andrew. Although the team's obviously pretty good. They're the number one seed in the East. So you know, good franchise. That's because Pat Riley is a competitor through and through, and he sets a winning culture from the top down. I would own the Knicks because James Dolan has to go and like. <laughs> it, <it's, laughs> and that team, there's so much potential with that team, and I just don't understand how we have not taken it there yet. So are we don't really? Get... Talking well, about real what? quick, real quick, Cage. Yeah. Did you know that the Knicks haven't signed a first round draft pick since 2000? <laughs> That's crazy. Before that. Yeah, before 2000. Yeah, Charlie Ward. They, they haven't signed one of their own first round draft picks to an extension. What about Porzingis? Oh, he didn't sign. Nope. It's insane. Charlie Ward is the last first rounder that they drafted in that the they signed the to another contract. In and the to be honest, honest, I can't it's even tell you who Charlie Ward is. Oh my He's God. a Heisman Trophy winner, actually. He played for Florida State in the 90s. He was a quarterback. Yeah, and then he became a point guard for the Knicks. So I'm going to change my answer if I'm allowed. If, if we really, like, money's no object. You can own whatever franchise you get. Andrew, Barca. You, you can buy Barca. You can buy soccer. I'm going to buy the Jets. And give it to Gary V. I was literally going to say, you got competition with Gary V. I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> he could just have it. That was it. Because I know he would work for the next 30 years to make sure I got value out of that gift for him. So oh it's one of those Alex, things. Why do you think Gary gets so much hate and venom, but yet love and praise from some in the house? I love him. I yeah. Okay. Because I kind of I kind of relate to him a little bit, right? Like, he is a lot. He is extra <laughs> AF. He is extra AF. I like him a lot too, um, but I will say he does like promote a lot of his own shit a lot. And it's like kind of like, you know, like the NFT stuff, wonderful, wonderful, but like the zero cool car, like, it, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a, sometimes it's a shady space, but Gary V is a genius. He's, he's a very insane hard worker. I don't know like how he does it all. I really don't. Blueberries. He is Exactly. He is so motivational. Like, it's, it's, it's clearly. He's he's so motivational and 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 hardworking and driven. And I think a lot of people are just jealous of that because they just don't understand his passion and his desire. Gary Vee could not work another day and still be like one of the richest people in the world. Like he doesn't need more money, right? Like he does this for now for passion. Um you think he has F U money? F U money is with a B. The what money? F U money. <laughs> that's not the goal by the way it's not the goal the goal is fe money what does that mean i, I don't know i'm a i don't want to be able to say f you i don't even want to say f everybody <laughs> <laughs> that's real money oh man alex any advice to young content creators coming up in the game women men kids adults yeah not just women all of, all of us let's see um I have so much advice. All right. <laughs> if ever anybody we have finds unlimited you, don't, here's my first advice. Don't, don't, do don't, don't do it. Don't do it. We don't know where we're going. Advice if for the you, hobby. If, no, no, if no. you want to be rich, don't do what I do. <laughs> um, if you want like a real life, no, I'm kidding. But seriously, here's my advice. Do something that you're passionate about. Like the second I stopped giving an F, a flying F about what people cared about me and my image and whatever, um, it's the second I started becoming like super successful. Um, I've worked really, really hard. It's a grind. Um, I've dealt with a lot of bullshit, like a lot of stuff that no one like ever 
like could dream of and it's going to come in my book my tell all book in like 2024 but wow. um just, just yeah. <laughs> never tell give up you guys i i can't explain to you enough how much rejection i have faced in my life in terms of everything fun fact I didn't get into Syri like New House, the New House School at Syracuse University at the time was the number one drone school in the world. I didn't get in originally. I had to go and then work my way up and transfer in. I was originally a sport management major. So I got rejected from them. The New York Jets, my first audition, they didn't like my hands. My hands were shaking. They said, You seem nervous. And I was like, Well, I have a steady tremor. They didn't, they didn't take me. So I had to move to Iowa and work um, for the Iowa Hawkeyes and do stuff on camera there. The next year, I got another audition with the Jets, got the job. Um, I've been rejected by, by everyone under the sun, every single big, big company you can ever dream of, but I never gave up. There is always, all you need is that one person, man, woman to give you that one shot, that one opportunity, slim shade. And, That's and it. Just, I was okay, if, you, if you're really there. passionate about your dream, just go for it. That's but it. it's not going to be easy. So that's my advice. <laughs> I mean, scene. that's it. And scene a hundred percent. I mean, listen, there's a lot to unpack there as there is every time mm. Alex starts and ends a sentence, uh, <laughs> a lot to unpack, which I mean, I've, I, I mean, uh, it's the same thing with me, but be passionate, do something you love and you might not succeed with your first try. You know what I mean? Not everyone's not as lucky as us. And what's the, what's the, just like what's podcast. The, wait, wait, hold on. I just thought of a really good piece of advice for a long Shoot. time. I was a small fish in a big pond and I figured out a way to be a big fish in a small pond. Yeah, eat the Find, other fish. Find your yeah, exactly. Find your <laughs> pond and then eat all the fish alive. <laughs> that's it. I love that's it. What I want. That's eat it. All the other fish. What is it? I right. missed nine thousand shots. One door closes. There's another one. Find a different way in. Find a different way in. There's always another route you can take. So, you hear that, Andrew? That's, that's the Michael it, Scott, Michael Jordan quote: "I missed nine thousand shots, lost three hundred games. I've been trusted to m make the game-winning shot multiple times and missed, and that's why I succeed." Ooh. That's a Michael great Jordan. Quote. Michael I got Scott. tons of paper company names. <laughs> I have no shortage of <laughs> no shortage. Of <laughs> Love you, Luca Nation. After we've had these amazing women on our 10 for 10 series, we're going to come back and it's just going to be Cage and I. Some yeah. of you guys are going to love that. Some of you guys are going to miss the ladies. Reach, I encourage you all to reach out to them, follow them, mm -hmm. re listen to the series, share it with a friend. And we'll be back tomorrow. Cage, any words of wisdom? Oh, man. Come on. That was a great close. Alex, thank you very much for all you did at Mint, leading up to Mint, after Mint. Can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, and thanks, thanks for being unapologetically yourself. I love you. I love you both. Thank you for doing what you do. I appreciate you both. I'm taken, so let's, let's go. <laughs> really? I'm not. <laughs>